Hello Sharks, I am Jonathan Little here today with another episode of Weekly Poker Hand. If you are listening to this on an audio podcast device, you may want to watch the video because today we are reviewing a hand that Trevor Savage played. He is a fantastic video blogger. Make sure you check him out at youtube.com slash raising the nuts. Let's go ahead and get right to it. Of the night takes place. Less limps and I make it $25 with King 10 all suit. Zach, all right. Hand of the night, he says. Here, Les, who we do not know, limps, and Trevor in the cutoff with King-10 offsuit raises it up, playing 2-5 no limit to $25 out of his $800 effective stack, which I think is perfectly fine, perfectly good, perfectly standard. This YouTube channel is youtube.com slash raising the nuts. King-10 offsuit is not quite the nut, quite the nuts, but it is close enough. Um, if you are unfamiliar with raising over limpers, your poker game needs some work. Check out pokercoaching.com slash cash tips for 41 of my best cash game tips on a nice little downloadable chart that you can use, well, while you're playing, before you're playing, etc., to make sure that you are playing well. All right, facing a limper, we raise it up with the king 10, perfectly fine and standard. My left here makes the call on the button. The on the button, Zach actually played a hand against Trevor in a previous hand that I reviewed on youtube.com slash poker coaching. Make sure you go back and watch that if you have not already. These two players seem to have a little bit of chemistry together when it comes to uh, getting in there and fighting hard at the poker table, as we are about to see in this hand, just like the previous hand. So, limp, raise to 25, cold call on the button. This cold call on the button is usually going to be a hand that's not quite good enough to re-raise. That's going to be usually just non-premium hands, right? Let's take a look. Big blind calls, less folds. So we go three ways to the flop. The flop comes down king, 10, seven with two spades. That's good. <laughs> the big blind checks to me, I bet $55. Zach makes the call and the big blind folds. Now All right, king, 10, seven, two spades. It's important when you're out of position to bet with a very strong polarized range. And as the board is more and more coordinated, you're typically gonna be betting on the bigger side. Here, king, 10, seven, two spades is very coordinated. This board should connect very well with both Zach and the big blinds range. So for that reason, I think you do want to bet your best hands like King 10 pretty big. So I love the way he's played this hand so far. Now the turn is where everything happens. The turn is the king. So All right. Turn is the king giving Trevor the super nuts. What do we do here with the super nuts? We're playing 720 remaining with 190 in the pot. Now, these two players do have a loose, splashy, battling dynamic as far as I know. So what do you do in this scenario? With the nuts, out of position against someone who you have a battling dynamic with, would you check? Would you bet small, like $60? Would you bet medium, like $100? Or would you bet big, like pot, $190? I want you to take a second, think about this, and write what you would do in the comment section below. All right, this is a spot where I think normally you probably just want to check to the loose, aggressive, battling, splashy player because a lot of players in this scenario will just bet really big when you check to try to get you off of everything worse than a king. However, if your opponent is the type of player who will just always check it behind with, let's say, a 10 or with a draw, then you definitely want to bet. So this is a spot that is very, very, very player dependent. If Trevor thinks he can bet and Zach will still call with like a seven or pocket eights or a bad draw like queen nine of hearts, then he should definitely, definitely bet. Um, if he thinks Trevor's not going to be betting all that often if checked to, then he should definitely bet, right? But if he does think that Trevor's just going to blast it off when checked to, then I think you definitely want to check here because it's just very hard for Trevor to have anything good because if you think about it, you block the majority of the value hands. It's hard for him to have a king, hard for him to have a 10, so that means he has something like a seven, which is pretty weak, or a draw, right? And if he's loose, flashy, badly, a lot of those players will just bet their draws when checked to. They'll be left with like nine high on the river and they'll bluff the nine high. And you'd really love to get the nine high to bluff on the river because if you bet turn here, the nine eight will still call. But then if you bet river, it's just gonna fold out, right? So quite often in this scenario, if you think your opponent's range is very weak, checking is quite powerful. But let's take a look at what happens. I think both options are definitely viable 
Um, and, and they depend on these players' exact chemistry together. We have the nuts now. I'm feeling great, obviously, have the nuts. So trying to figure out how to get the most value. So I go ahead and keep betting. Uh, I think Zach can continue with a bunch of hands. Obviously, there's only one king left in the deck, but he can continue with some 10x hands, some straight draws, some flush draws. So I go... I agree with all that. Trevor goes for a $100 bet, which I think you can probably bet just a little bit bigger because I don't think a 10 is ever folding to a bigger bet, like, say, 120, 130. And that just allows you to make a bigger bet on the river, right? And also no good draw is going to fold. No spades are going to fold. No open-ended straight draw is going to fold to 120. Um, if you think, like, gut shots, like Queen-9 will call against 100, then maybe that gains a little bit of merit. But uh, I'm not really a huge fan of that because... I think gut shots are just going to fold to any bet on the turn most of the time. Or maybe they'll get insane and raise no matter how much you bet. But he does go for 100. I, th I think you probably could have sized it up a little bit. If you like, I didn't say being nitpicky, but, you know, it, discussing the differences between all of these various bet sizes, make sure you check out all of the quizzes at PokerCoaching.com. There we give you many bet size options. Sometimes they're kind of close. But right here, I think $120 compared to 100 just gets, well, Four extra big blinds in on the turn when your opponent's drawing dead. And then the pile will be a little bit bigger going to the river, which will allow you to bet a little bit bigger. Go into the river, which will usually result in another 40 or $50, which is eight or 10 big blinds. And if you can extract an additional, well, 12 big blinds from your opponents just by using a slightly bigger bet size, that's going to go a long way to increasing your win rate in the long run. So make sure you check out the quizzes at pokercoaching.com slash free. All right, he goes for 100. This is a spot where when uh, Trevor bets turn, Zach should really not do a whole lot of raising because he's sort of announced he's very polarized, right? And in this scenario, when, like Trevor has all the kings, right? And you have to be very cautious raising into someone's range who contains a bunch of kings. So this is a spot where I think Zach should just do mostly calling. Anytime your opponent's very polarized and you're in position, you typically want to call with the majority of your range. I had about 100, and as Zach is, is thinking. That's draw? No. I kind of wish I had a draw. Chemistry, huh? Got a king. I kind of wish I had a king. Ah! Yes, more speech play. Let's go. Can I show him one and we'll play the rest of the hand? Can I do you can that? do that. Yeah, they don't care. You can do that. You want to see one of mine too? Yeah, here you go. Trevor shows a 10. Why in the world would Trevor show a 10? Unless, of course, this is something he's doing all the time on a very, very regular basis. Which I cannot imagine he's doing because I think you would quickly torture money. Um, why would you show a 10? Because you want your opponent to continue. That's why. If you want your opponent to continue, what should Trip? What should uh, Zach do? Well, probably not continue. Let's see what happens. He shows us the Queen of Clubs. You can't beat this card, right? Now somehow Zach shows the Queen of Clubs. What could he have? King Queen. Queen Jack. Queen Ten. Pocket queens every once in a while. Shows the queen of clubs. There's not two clubs on the board, so he doesn't have the ace queen of clubs, most likely. Um, I don't know why you'd show a queen. What a weird card to show. I don't know what this means. All I know is that when Trevor shows this 10, I gotta think this is gonna be very, very strong. So, if you're sitting here with queen 10, should you fold it? Well, you gotta remember... Zach raised over and under the gun limp. So he probably doesn't have, like, Jack-10 all that often, right? He could have it, but probably not. He probably doesn't have 10-9 all that often. He could have it, but probably not. So that means he has Ace-10, King-10, Queen-10, 10-10. Queen-10's not a great shape against those hands, but it could still just be a call, I think, although it's close. Um, what if Zach has Queen-Queen, the next best hand with a Queen? That's a tougher one. I'm not going to say you should uh, fold it, but it certainly feels pretty gross. Uh, what about Queen Jack? I think it's probably fine just to call unless, unless we have some reads on this speech play. Yay! If we have reads on the speech play, this is a nuts, then you should just, you should literally fold everything. 
<laughs> you should fold everything besides the king-queen. And king-queen is just kind of gross because, uh, you know, you, you still lose to the 10-10 and the king-10, but you block the king-10, so you don't really see how you can fold king-queen. <laughs> We're going to play with one card out from now on. On the turn. Oh, I wish you hadn't shown me that. Because <laughs> you can't beat it? Anytime someone does something that is way out of the ordinary, unless they do this stuff on a very regular basis, they're probably trying to induce you to make a mistake. But if they were just like trying to get you to fold, why would they show something pretty decent? You know what I mean? It's not like he showed a jack here, right? If, if Trevor shows a jack here, then like the best hand you can have is king jack. And you would never want to do that when your opponent could just be sitting there with super nuts. So why would you show a 10? Because you really want your opponent to continue. I have queen. Wait, what? Zach has queens. Who knows if that's true? We already said what to do with queens. I wish show you the other one, but that kind of ruins the whole point <laughs> of what we're doing. <laughs> All right, so we have a $100 bet, minimum raise. If you have a queen-queen, Zach, I cannot comprehend why you'd want to put in a minimum raise here. When you have queens, absolute marginal made hand. You want to do everything you can to keep the pot as small as possible. Pretty much anytime you have a marginal made hand, you got to be very careful, especially when your opponent could just have the nuts. And right here, there's nothing stopping Trevor from having king-10 or 10-10, right? Uh, so you should definitely just call with queens. With king, queen, I mean, I think you still just want to call because if, like what, what Trevor's drawing dead, right? If he has a 10, if you have king, queen, and if he does have king, 10, you also want to minimize the size of the pot because now you're, like, you're not concerned with Trevor having draws, right? If you have ace, queen, or queen, jack, Maybe the play is to get fancy and raise and then fold if jammed, but like why? He's just going to call you every time. Why not just call and try to spike, right? I mean, fold ace queen, but why would you call with, uh, why not Why not call with queen jack? Doesn't make sense. I don't know what's happening here. I don't think this makes sense. Zach, if you're watching, this does not make sense. Zach, Zach will let us know in the comments probably. I'll, I'll show you, not kidding. If you don't have a king, then you're not good. If you have a king, then obviously I'm completely Taylor says, I don't know what's happening. I don't know what's happening either. <laughs> Make it 300, Dad. <laughs> sure, click it back. Why not? Yes. <laughs> They're having too much fun. YouTube.com slash raising the nuts. All right. Bet 100. Minimum raise. Minimum re-raise. Again, I don't know if this kind of, these shenanigans happen all the time, but if this is an abnormal occurrence, alarm bells should be just blaring in Zach's head. So I think literally everything's just a fold here in this scenario, unless you have exactly the king queen. And when you have the king queen, it's annoying. With the king queen, you got a call to do everything you can to induce some weird bluff. I don't think that's ever going to happen, but I think that's what you got to do with king queen. With queen jack, just fold, right? I mean, stuff's gotten too weird. You may say, but pot odds, right? We have to put in a hundred to try to win like 800. Yeah, yeah, but uh, we've, we've hopped through a bunch of hoops to where either Trevor is the most bizarrely insane creative player in the whole world. Maybe he is. Maybe he is. Go watch his YouTube content. No no one is this bizarrely creative. Nothing against Trevor. No one is this bizarrely creative with 10-9. Uh, Could you imagine if he had 10-9 here? No way. No way. Trevor, next vlog you make, I want to see you to do. I want to see you do this with ten nine, please. Then I will. Um, well, I'll be very proud for you. <laughs> All right, what? I like I said, king queen's like a reluctant call. I think everything else is just a fold. Maybe king queen's even a fold. No, no, I know what he did. I don't. I don't understand why he did it. Um, I want to make it really clear. I don't. It doesn't matter what you have here. You should not go all in if you have a queen in your hand because Trevor always folds ten nine. I think if he has it. He always folds, what does he always fold? Well, uh, is he getting the right odds to call with draws? No, so he's always gonna fold draws. And um, he's always gonna call with 
the nuts, right? So he's gonna play perfectly if you shove. <laughs> Unless, of course, Zach, Zach's really creative with the uh, queen nine. Could you imagine Zach shows up with queen nine of clubs? I'd fall off my chair, even though we're at a standing desk. I'd fall out of my standing desk if he shows up with queen nine here. I, I actually am kind of rooting for him to have queen nine, because that'd be a lot of fun. <laughs> with queen nine, what do you do? Jam, I guess? No, you can't jam, it's just a fold. Don't, 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 don't get that ridiculously creative. It's just not good. Your opponent is gonna have the nuts a lot when they show a card and then minimum re-raise the turn. I promise you. I'm sure some people in the comment section are gonna say this is so incredibly long-winded. I cannot reiterate this often enough or enough to where when someone takes overly creative lines and they do really weird things, unless they're just doing it all the time, they have the knots. I can beat a queen. One queen at least. It's true. This is gonna be on the vlog for sure. I would hope so. What's going on, dude? Like, I really do have queens. Do you have tens? Like. Because oh, if I put it all in, you're gonna snap me off with tens, and if not, you're gonna fold. Because why would you call? Mm-hmm. This sucks. I can't flat, dude. I have queens. Why can't you flat? I think flatting is the only option here because when you call with queens, you're still in the same guessing game on the river, but then you keep Trevor's range as wide as you possibly can. When you jam here with queens, then. Trevor just plays perfectly, right? If he's sitting here with 10, 90 folds, if he has king, 10, or 10s, he calls. So he's going to play perfectly. If you call here, Trevor, assuming he ever does this with nonsense, which I'm going to give Zach the benefit of the doubt for considering this, um, that, that Trevor is just the most insanely creative player in the world. If Trevor has, ever does this with 10, 9, you want to do everything in your power to call and give him every possible opportunity to bluff so that you can call turn and then call river. Because he's drawing thin to dead, right? If he's drawing thin to dead, you really want him in. And you also, you know, every once in a while you get off the hook on the river because he doesn't shove the river in some, again, very weird creative world. Maybe that's 100 on the river for all I know. Um, again, I don't, I don't know too much about either of these players, but it's a weird spot, right? But if you know your opponent is going to play perfectly against the shove, then don't shove. Do everything you can to keep whatever bluffs there are in. You can hit a queen on the river. Huh, yeah. Did you hear that? That is almost certainly a tell. But you could hit a queen on the river. Why would he say this unless he can't hit a queen on the river? I could, but I don't think I need one. I don't, I don't have pocket tens. I mean... Another very... Well, statement that is very clarifying, right? When he says he does not have pocket tens, that is almost certainly true. He's trying here to make his hand seem weaker by announcing he does not have a strong hand without actually announcing he does not have a strong hand. I didn't think you had pocket tens. I'm just worried if you really have a boat. Obviously only one boat available, king ten. It'd be really sick if you have king queen all this time. I wouldn't do that to you. Like it, it, I mean, it's funny and all, but it's not funny now. Because <laughs> you can tell I'm really stressing everyone. Jam! Jam! Do it! He can't do it. You gotta just call. Call. <laughs> he does jam. I am yes! You got a boat? Yeah. It's not could have king-king, too. That's true. Didn't even occur to me you could have king-king. Oh, he couldn't have king-king. There's a 10 on the board. Duh. <laughs> or 10, on, 10 phase up. Not all in, but whatever. Yeah, that's fine. All right. There's another river card. Pro tip. He's drawing very thin. Indeed. Tough hand. Tough spot. Oh, look. He had the queen jack. Yes. I think that's actually, actually a reasonable play. A reasonable play with queen jack for um, open-ended straight draw here. Because if he does have 10-9, you can get him to fold. The thing is, though is that if you just call, first off, you're getting amazing pot odds, you'll get there sometimes. If Trevor does jam river, you can call perfectly, right? Well, perfectly enough, meaning if you get a king, a queen, I'm sorry, a queen, a jack, or 
a an ace or a nine, you can call it off, right? And so in this scenario, I think you still just have to call. Like that's what I'm saying. It just really doesn't make a whole lot of sense to jam with much of anything here because Trevor's going to play very perfectly. And like like I said, he's not bluffing very often, but when he is bluffing, it's you're just getting eight to one pot odds. Collect your eight to one pot odds with your draw and hope to spike because he's never folding out a, a better hand in this scenario. Well, he's never folding out the nuts, which I do think is a real part of his range. Weird hand, kind of convoluted hand. Let me know what you think about these, well, kind of convoluted hands. If you want more fun, exciting, interesting hands and pro tips, check out youtube.com slash raising the nuts. Huge thanks to Trevor for letting me use this footage. I know it may sound like I was a little bit critical of Trevor's speech play, and I do think some of those things may actually be perhaps a bit of tells, but, but, I could be wrong about all this. I'm not the best player in the world when it comes to reading players and speech play. Trevor's in there doing speech play all day, every day. He got Zach to put it in with the queen and the jack. So maybe he played it great. Probably did. That's going to be it for today. Good luck in your games. If you have any hands from other video bloggers you would like me to discuss here on my YouTube channel, let me know in the comments section below. I'm happy to check it out. Go out there, support the poker video bloggers. They do great work bringing you footage from all the games that they are playing. And it's a lot of fun. I appreciate all of you video bloggers out there. Good luck in your games. Have a great, great week. Run hot. And I'll talk to you next time. How do you like free stuff? Yeah? Well, good, because I have a free membership to my site, pokercoaching.com, for you. Click, get out of the way, hat. Click right up there to get it. And while you're at it, go ahead and click the subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next video.